Francisca Boateng is an entrepreneur, philanthropist, speaker, and educator with nearly three decades of experience in business operations and accounting. She and her husband started and run Slam Technologies, an IT company based in the U.S. and Ghana to provide IT training and services to organizations, governments, and individuals. At Slam, she serves as a co-founder and director of operations. In addition to her work at SLAM, Francisca is passionate about giving back. She is the co-founder of Speak Well Foundation, an organization that teaches people how to be effective communicators and leaders. Francisca started Lead to Read, a literacy-focused non-profit organization with her daughter. Since 2016, Read to Lead has built three libraries, fundraised over 100,000 books, and served around 50,000 students and their families. Most recently, she founded SLAM A, a non-profit organization created to provide free technical skill-based training for people around the world through slam aid they have also built the nimd app to teach people basic to intermediate it skills in 10 different languages and dialects she also has a clothing line or dust closet where every fabric and design will make you feel loved francisca was born and raised in kumasi ghana but has lived in the u.s since 1994 after she graduated from archbishop porter girls secondary school in 1993 oxford university in 1998 and Strayer university in 2005. She is the mother of four kids, three girls and one boy, and the grandmother to two beautiful children. She and her husband, Samuel, have been married for 26 years. Francisca loves to travel and is passionately in love with her Savior, Jesus Christ. She prefers to be referred to as God's favorite daughter. Hello and welcome to another amazing episode of Inspire. I am your host, Monique Laws, and today we are joined by a very powerful, beautiful, successful businesswoman. She graduated at Oxford University and founded a tech company with her husband, Mrs. Francisca Boateng. It's an honor to have you. How are you? I'm doing very well. And you, Monique? I'm very well. Thank you, by the grace of God. So please tell me, how long have you been in Ghana? So I've been here for the past two weeks. Okay. Yes. And how's but your trip going? It's going really well. I've really enjoyed myself. I, I, it was a lot of hard work, but... It's almost at the end. I leave back tomorrow. What is it that drives you and moves you to be so involved with your community projects? So you gave me an excellent introduction, but one that you missed and I didn't tell you is I'm God's favorite daughter. Amen. We have a dad that gives and he's given me so much. Mm -hmm. To whom much is given, much is expected. So Amen. all I can do is give back. Amen. So basically that's why. And one thing I want on my tombstone one day is that I was a philanthropist. Wow, that's very powerful. Um, do you have any more of the vast projects that you could tell us about that you're involved in? So um, we run, actually I run three nonprofits. Mm -hmm. One is called Speak Well. Mm -hmm. It's to encourage Christians to speak well and everybody. So it's the art of public speaking. But if you want to speak well, you have to know who you are. So we go to the basic and teach you who you are in the Lord. So that you can have the skills. You can right. have all the skills. But if you don't know who you are, you can't present yourself well. So we wow. go back to the root, encourage you so you can speak well. Wow. Then we have Slam Foundation, our corporate social arm of our IT company. The goal of that foundation is to teach the next generation who are underprivileged, who cannot afford to pay for IT classes. Our goal is to educate one million people for free. So it's wow. a huge tax, but I have a big God, so I'm not scared of anything he, he puts in my heart. Then read to lead. So these are the three um, nonprofits I run, and I enjoy doing it so much on top of running our business. Wow, so you're raising a new generation. Excellently. And Amazing. with my dad on my side. Amen. Amen. Yes. Okay, so I wanted to know, were you born and raised here? Yes. Okay. I was born and raised in Kumasi. Oh, lovely. In the Ashanti region. Um, I grew up in a, a non-traditional home. My parents were not married. So, but I had a very loving mom and a loving dad, which is quite surprising because I grew up in a broken home. But I had a dad lo that loved me dearly. Went to um, a private school in Kumase, graduated and went to secondary school in Takrade, Archbishop okay. Ota Girls Secondary School. And um, that's where my journey ended after that. Um, things progressed and then I left um, Ghana. Okay, and so when you left, you went to the UK? No, I left to go to the US. Okay. So um, 
I would share how I left and how I went to the UK. Yes, So please. right after secondary school, back then, now the system has changed, but back then we were doing the O levels and A levels. Mm -hmm. So I, it was after my O levels. Um, so I graduated, was ready to go to um, A levels, found out I was pregnant, so couldn't pursue my A levels, had a child, mm -hmm. and my uncle came from the US, asked me what I wanted to do. I was, um, my baby was three months. Shared with him that, um, Right, my life had ended at that point because I had so many goals and aspirations. But with that setback, I wasn't sure where to go. And mm -hmm. he said that he will help me go to the US to pursue my dreams. And that's how it all happened. Next thing I find myself in the US. So my uncle actually took me to the US. Amazing. Yes. So when you got to the US, did you pursue further education? I didn't because, you know, with a culture shock, live, getting back on my feet. It was challenging. Okay. So I had to work some menial jobs just to survive. Mm -hmm. Although my uncle was there, he had his own responsibilities as well. And then I had a child to take care of at that point. So it was quite challenging. So first I wanted to get some money saved and then pursue education. Mm -hmm. So I, I didn't pursue education until God put me back in my dad's life to then go to Oxford and study, yes. So what did you study? So I studied political and social issues and development. And um, how long did you spend in the UK? Three years. Okay. Yes. And then after that, what after did you do? So whilst there, I met my husband. Wow. Please tell us about the story, because you told me earlier, and it was beautiful. Please, for our viewers, tell us how you met your husband. Mm -hmm. We grew up in the same neighborhood, on the same street. We never met. I think I shared when they don't believe me. I never saw him, he never saw me. He always came to the house next door to visit his wow. friends. We didn't know each other. Um, went to Oxford, went to a church service, and he, there he was. And I'm like, oh my goodness, you're Ghanaian? He said, yes, where do you live? He told me. And I was really surprised. We became closer, very good man, became good friends and finally got married. I praise God. Um, but when we got married, he always had the American dream. And since I had lived in the US, he then said, let's go back since you've lived there before. Mm -hmm. So that's where we circled back to the US. Nice, and that's where you're situated now. Yes. Um, yes. Did you pursue any further education in the US? Yes, yes, okay. so I, I got a degree in accounting. Well done, yes. amazing. Yes. Your husband and you founded a tech company. Could yes. you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, so when I met my husband, he's always been technical. He, mm -hmm. His mind is creative and he loves technical stuff. So he's forever been in IT. Ever since I met him, he's always pursued IT. Um, in 2007, I had homeschooled my kids for a bit. Mm -hmm. We had worked in the cycle, trying different things. But my both parents um, of mine were entrepreneurs, so I mm -hmm. always wanted to work for myself and mm -hmm. we, we've all, my husband had the same desire. So we decided to start our own um, tech business through what he's learned. So everything was formulated from what his experiences and he was the main instructor. And we built it, we started in the US and after a while um, came to Ghana to also get an office here. So we mostly do um, IT trainings, especially cybersecurity. And we also, also wow. offer support services for businesses, for individuals. And we also really now have a, a, a thing called SOC as a service, where we can uh, actually take your systems and monitor it for you um, remotely and make wow. sure that you don't get any attacks or any intrusion and anything else. So you mentioned that um, you homeschooled your children for a while. Yeah. Could you tell me why you chose to take that route and how do you think it's impacted them growing up? Okay, so I'm not an educationist, but I love education. Um, mm -hmm. And I always wanted the best for my kids. Um, I had a plan for my kids, but God, when I had to, I had to submit that plan. So, you know, as a mother, I wanted the best. I wanted all my kids to go to Ivy League schools, Oxford, the best of the best. Every mother, every parent wanted that. And we put them, I, and because I didn't really understand the American school system, I was scared of the public school system mm -hmm. initially. So we put them in a private Christian school, mm -hmm. which was 
excellent, but academically the school wasn't doing well. Mm -hmm. So they were getting the Christian foundation, but they were missing a lot of the things that I, I wanted them to get. Right. So after prayer and research, we decided to pull all of them from school. And I homeschooled them um, for almost five years. Wow. Teaching them daily. And the impact on them was great. I would have done Thanks it through God. high school. I would have done it till they graduated. But I had a terrible fall. I had to pull up. I had to be in bed for almost a year. So I'm I couldn't sorry. teach them any longer. Mm -hmm. And they had to go back to school. But they all went almost a grade higher than they were. And Thanks they God. didn't miss anything. I think some people are concerned when you're homeschooling. What about the social aspect? Mm -hmm. I'm a very social person. I have four kids. They are social. So they never missed out or never lacked anything. They they came out better and I, I enjoyed that time with them and it gave me a lot of peace knowing what they know and all my kids are doing so well and I'm super super proud of all of them for how far God has taken them and how he's blessed their mind. Sometimes people come to me and say you're a great mother and I, told, I tell them I'm not the best but I gave them over to who could teach them better and he did and now I see the results. Did you have any church commitments together in your relationship? Yes. So when I met him, he was preaching in Oxford. Mm -hmm. And um, we moved to the U.S. And um, the church we went to, we were really involved. We, the church had a Bible school, so we both went through it. We taught different classes. We taught the kids. He's an elder there now. We do the best. Wherever we go, you know, we are all called to ministry. So... Sometimes God calls you in different areas of ministry. Wherever I find myself, even in a taxi, I still minister. Mm. If it's a platform you give me. I've, I've been, some friends will invite me to preach here and there, on radio, on TV sometimes. Wherever I get, I just don't have to be confined to a stage to preach. We are all called. So now with business and stuff, our office is the, <laughs> the platform because everybody that comes there Either you get to know God or you stay far away from God because I've bombarded you with a lot of God stuff. <laughs> I, you, can't, you can't separate one or the other. You That's can't right. meet God's favorite daughter and not be affected by it. Amen. You, you cannot. It, it's, it's impossible for you to come in my presence and not feel the God that is so big and great in me. Amen. It's, it's, it's essential that I, I show him off through every aspect of my life. And that's my goal. Um, you have a few hidden talents. Would you like to share one or two with us? <laughs> so I'm wearing my own fashion line. Wow, lovely. It's called Odos Closet. Odo in our dialect is love. I've wow. told you, Odo. So every dress will make you feel loved. Wow. I'm six one. I'm very tall for a Ghanaian. Mm -hmm. And I'm big. God gave me extra flesh. <laughs> extra love. <laughs> extra <laughs> love. So it's difficult to find the right dress. And I love to look good. Mm -hmm. So it's been challenging. And um, I asked my daughter one day to design some dresses for me. She did. And I started sourcing the fabric. I found somebody to help me bring these love dresses to life. So I model my own dresses and Lovely. sell them. Um, we also bake. We have Odos Cupcake. Wow. <laughs> Odos Sobolo. We do everything. Um, my husband handles most of that. But now with everything taking our attention, it's even difficult to pursue those areas. Maybe when we get to our 80s, we'll pursue the baking and the um, Sobolo and other things. But right now, Odos Closet. It's one of my hidden um, talents, and I love modeling, and I love wearing it, and I love looking good, and I love showing off my daddy, because when you see me, you've seen him. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Are there any goals that you had um, in your younger years that you've firstly achieved or have not achieved? So growing up, I wanted to be a doctor. Okay. And sometimes I sit down and I think, did I really want to be a doctor, or was it because a doctor was the most prestigious thing in Ghana. And sometimes I think it was because it was prestigious. I love people, but I can't stand the sight of blood and people <laughs> hurting. So I don't think I would have been a good doctor. But I always wanted to be successful. I knew I always wanted to have a lot of money. 
And um, I believe that I, I've not gotten where I want to be yet, mm -hmm. but I'm taking the steps towards it. Mm -hmm. I loved God from childhood, and I still love him. So right now, I think mm -hmm. I'm where I'm supposed to be. Wow. But I know there's more to come. Just give an Esther moment. <laughs> okay, so um, have there been any um, challenges that you face? What's one of your most difficult challenges that you've had to overcome? Yes, so um, when I was growing up, I was a good girl. And I, I still want to be a good girl. Like, I try to stay in line. Mm -hmm. I was never lashed or caned because I'll go to school early. I will do everything on time. I didn't want any rebuke or anything. If my mom rebuked me, um, it was maybe something else. But I tried to stay in line. I never dated. I never went to a club. Even my school's own entertainment, I didn't go to. So I tried. I was a Catholic girl. Mm -hmm. And what kept me in line then was to go to communion because if you sinned, you'd have to go to the priest to confess your sins and I didn't want to go to the priest. Mm -hmm. So I would rather stay in line so I could go to communion. And um, tried, never dated. After secondary school, I found myself pregnant. Not because I consented to it, but because mm -hmm. I was forced. Mm -hmm. And it brought a lot of shame mm -hmm. because... Everybody was like, oh, the virgin of Lobito now is pregnant. How, like all the guys were making a lot of fun of me mm -hmm. and ridiculing me to a point where I couldn't even stay in our house. Had to leave and go to um, stay with one of my grand aunts. And it, uh, it was shameful that I stayed away. Thank God I left Ghana. I don't know how I would have stayed here because mm -hmm. it was such a time of shame and pain. Mm -hmm. And through the pregnancy, even going to the um, doctor's office, um, the way they treated you like you're a bad girl. And I knew I wasn't a bad girl. And they gave me so much anger and pain each time they said that. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it was quite a challenging time. Um, I would say that shame even drew me closer to God. And I came Amen. to realize that instead of my shame, he'll give me double honor. And I, I trusted that because I used to not want to even meet my classmates. So they would ask what happened. I wanted to hide under, <laughs> if there was a cave I could go in, then I would. But I think I've been restored um, through it all and through taking my hurt and pain to him. He's really taking care of that shame aspect and that pain and... Now I can stand straight and talk about it without any pain or any tears. Mm. It's only to his glory. Yes. Glory to God. He will yes. never leave you or forsake you. Yes. Um, do you feel there was adequate support um, from family or community at the time? or Not at not all. At all? Okay. Not at all. Mm. First of all, when it happened, I, there was no one I could go to. Not one person. Initially, I thought I would speak to my mom, but I knew how she would respond. My dad was out of the question. My grandma, I, there was not even a friend. There was no one. Mm, so I couldn't wow. even tell anybody what had happened until I found out I was pregnant. And when I found out I was pregnant, I couldn't even get the opportunity to explain how it happened. Mm. Because they had seen me with a guy. I blamed myself because he didn't force me into the room. I w that's, that's what made it so crazy because I went into the room myself, not to date him, not to do anything. Mm -hmm. So I blamed myself walking in and then I didn't know how to even explain that I walked in mm -hmm. because they will ask you, how did you get there? Mm -hmm. And that always bothered me and I always um, felt like I wish there was somebody else that I could have confided in, mm -hmm. talked to, mm -hmm. but there was none. And I think, so, even now, I don't think society is open to those ideas. Because mm -hmm. even now, when I share my story, like, really? Mm -hmm. You, the, like, immediately you can see a switch, like, wow, so you were a bad girl before. Mm -hmm. I've seen people think, mm -hmm. like, oh, now you've changed now. Mm -hmm. But not every girl that got pregnant was because they were bad or they were going after anything. That's right. And we have to learn to judge, not yeah. let's share, be judged. Um, how old were you 
when you fell pregnant? I was 16. Okay. And I had it when I was 17. Wow, wow. So for a 16-year-old mind, I mean, I know you had God to lean on, but what was going through your mind in terms of the next step? I found out at five months. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. I was getting ready to go to sixth form. Mm -hmm. I was ready, like I had my suitcase packed. So it was a confusing time. It was a sad time challenging um didn't know what to do didn't know where to go really and i didn't have that connection with god to even cry out to him mm. i used to just walk the streets and cry and wail when nobody's watching because i felt like my life had ended then mm -hmm. um i didn't know the scripture then that said he has a plan for me mm -hmm. i wish i knew those mm -hmm. it could have yes i it happened. It could have given me much solace, but at that point, there was nothing like that. So it was a very dark time in my life. Mm -hmm. Very dark. You mentioned um, before that you don't feel like people have really accepted it. Um, now, what do you think can be done to change the stigma and change the narrative of people who have been assaulted? I think we have to change the way we parent. Parenting, mm. um, the way Very that good. that has to be changed because you can't be here and have your child here. Mm -hmm. There has to be a break. There has to be room for communication. Mm. When I come to Ghana mm. and most places, my heart hurts because most mothers, most fathers, their goal is their job or career or something. But God gave you a gift, you know, when you get, because God said, children are a blessing. Mm -hmm. That's the only word God used for children, nothing else. Mm -hmm. So if you really truly believe God's word that this is a blessing, you will hold it as such. You will raise it as such. Amen. And open a way to communicate with that blessing because this world is confusing for any child. Mm -hmm. Especially these times, mm -hmm. cyberbullying and all that. That's right. You have to open a channel to really get inside how they are feeling, especially in our society here. Fathers are not talking to their kids. Mothers are not. Now it's house girls, taxi drivers, drivers that are raising kids. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How? Mm -hmm. When God has given you a blessing. So parenting has to change. The way we parent, there has to be open communication so that a child will be comfortable. And we have to also lower expectations and put, sometimes I think parents put too high of an expectation on children that they, they don't know what to do. It's like you have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. No one is perfect. God in his own wisdom gave us grace. That's why his, his mercies are new every morning. He knew we will mess up. That's why it's new every morning. God, the perfect God, has given us room to mess up. How much more are you a parent? Mm. If they mess up, you are there to, you have to just have your arms open, love on them and tell them it's okay, get up. Mm. That's how champions are raised. Champions Amen. are people that were knocked out over and over, but they still got up. So that's how we parent. That's how we raise leaders. Give them an open room for them to come and say, Mommy, I messed up so bad. I messed up. I don't know what to do. You say, you know what? Let's talk about it. How can we fix it? You direct them to the God that created them. Amen. So it's, it's, I think parenting has to change. Everywhere I go, that's my message. We have to change how we parent, both mother and father. We all have a responsibility. Sure. The father, you gave this child their identity. So if you did it through sex, you have to do it through words. And you are giving them an identity. You gave them your name. That's not just the, the name you gave them. You have to tell them you're beautiful. You're going somewhere. You're a yeah. leader. Every single day. Fathers yeah. have a much more important role to play. But most fathers are sitting just watching TV. They have no idea where their kids are. Yeah. Wow. It has to Preach. Change. I mean, it's been so beautiful. I'd love to talk to you longer. <laughs> but for anyone that's watching, do you have any words of encouragement? I would like to say that we have a good God. Every Christian has to establish that.
God is not like your father. God is not like your mother. He is perfect. Mm -hmm. He is love. He is good. Every word he said concerning your life will pass. Amen. Come to pass. So we have to exercise patience and trust in that God that created you uniquely for himself and for his glory. He will not fail, fail you. You will not fail. You will not die prematurely. Amen. You will not lack. Amen. Everything he said concerning you will come to pass. So I pray that if you are listening today, you allow his love to shine through you, flow through you and bless you. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you from the bottom of my heart, Mrs. Francisca Boateng, for joining us today on Inspire. It's been impactful. May the good Lord bless you with an abundance of grace and favor. You are highly anointed and we'd love to have you back. That's all for now on Inspire. Thank you for joining us and we hope to see you on the next. <music>